Hey, what's up guys? It's Steve with the MMA Minute here. This is the show where I do the research, I crunch the numbers, and I give you my full card predictions and three best bets in a short and sweet rapid fire format. If you like what you see, make sure to hammer that like and subscribe button down below. Let's get into it. De La Rosa taking on Aldridge. De La Rosa, the minus 102 underdog. Aldridge, the minus 118 favorite. And you have JJ Aldridge taking this fight on short notice. JJ Aldridge is a generalist. She is decent everywhere, but she's not great anywhere. And I think that in this spot, when you're getting a very close fight, we know this is most likely going to decision. De La Rosa is going to have the size edge, the physicality edge, and we know that she is going to be the better wrestler in there. So if you're getting a very close fight, likely to go to decision, it just makes sense to take the underdog here, especially with JJ on short notice. So give me De La Rosa to win by decision. Maness taking on Mendonca. Maness the plus 190 underdog. You have Mendonca the minus 230 favorite. This line opened close to a pick -em. It has completely steamed on the Mendonca side. And personally, I don't see it. Mendonca is your classic shoot to box guy, so you know he's going to be dangerous. He has flashy striking, he has good grappling, but I think he is a defensive liability, and you're getting a guy who is not proven in the UFC yet. Maness, on the other hand, is an absolute dog, has very good size at 125, he has strong takedown defense, and he has solid striking. So in this spot, you're getting a lot of hype on Mendonca, but I actually think Nate Maness is the correct side here, so I will go with Nate Maness to win by decision. Demopolis taking on Murata. Demopolis plus 270 as the underdog. Murata the minus 340 favorite. This is another spot where with Murata, we have the line, the money coming in on her side, and I think it makes total sense. I don't know how you can back Demopolis at this point. She kind of had hype at one point, but I think she's completely overrated at this point, and she's got subpar striking. I think her defense is a liability. Her takedown defense is 50%. She does have a decent submission game, but I think she's willing to give up position over submission, and that's going to be a problem here for Murata, who is going to just chain wrestle nonstop. I think she's going to be able to find the takedowns and the control time. She stays out of harm's way with Demopolis' sub attempts, so I think this is Murata by decision all day. Arichi Lang taking on Johnny Munoz. Arichi Lang minus 115 as the favorite. Munoz the minus 105 underdog. This line has tightened up. Munoz was a bigger underdog earlier in the week, and I think this is a spot where you need to jump in on Munoz now because he will likely continue to climb with his line. He will probably become the favorite at some point soon. And when you look at Arichi Lang, yes, he's probably going to have the striking edge, but I think his striking defense is actually very suspect and his takedown game is very bad. We've seen in his last few fights, guys like Jay Perrin, very low levels. Shout out to Jay Perrin. He is a regional fighter in my area. Interviewed him a couple times. It's no offense to him, but clearly he wasn't cut out for the UFC and he was able to land three takedowns on my guy, Arichi Lang. And we've also seen that Arichi Lang has been subbed twice before in his professional career. Yes, he's going to be the better striker, but I think Munoz has decent striking. He can keep it competitive on the feet. And I think if he gets it to the ground, that's where the trouble begins. Give me Johnny Munoz to win round two submission. Chris Gutierrez taking on Montel Jackson. This is a great fight here. Gutierrez plus 155 as the underdog. Montel Jackson, the minus 185 favorite. Gutierrez was just moments away from becoming a top 10 perennial contender if he goes out there and beats Pedro Munoz, but he completely drops the ball on that one and now he turns around and he finds himself as an underdog against a very difficult Montel Jackson, a guy who is huge for 135, who's going to have an eight inch reach edge here he hits like an absolute truck and he has solid wrestling so yes this feels like a very tall hill to climb for Gutierrez but if Gutierrez is good at anything great even I'd say he can smash his opponent's legs to bits and that's something that he needs to do here if he's able to do that to Montel Jackson because Gutierrez is going to have that speed advantage he chops away the lead leg that's going to take away the striking the danger on Jackson. I don't think he'll be able to use the wrestling as much as he wants to if that lead leg is all busted up. So I do think there is a way for Gutierrez to win, staying on the outside, utilizing the speed, smashing that lead leg. And if he's able to do that, I will go with Gutierrez to win as an underdog by decision. Kovalkiewicz taking on Belbita. Kovalkiewicz minus 165 is the favorite. Belbita the plus 145 underdog. And you're going to see Belbita is getting a lot of love as the underdog this week. But personally, 
I think it's the Kovacavich side that makes sense to me. Belbita probably has a small striking edge, and that mainly comes with the very high level of volume she's able to throw out there, but she lacks that finishing ability, those power shots, and I think with Kovacavich, she is showing a big resurgence in her career here. I think she's able to keep it competitive on the feet, and the biggest gap that we're going to see here is the wrestling game of both girls. I think Kovacavich will have a much better wrestling advantage here. That's where Belbita struggles, so if Kovacavich can keep it close on the feet, if she can mix in the wrestling, I think she is going to win this fight by decision. Hernandez taking on Algio. Hernandez is the plus 115 underdog. Algio is the minus 135 favorite. Closely lined fight and it makes a lot of sense. But when you look at this, we've seen Hernandez against a guy like Billy Q. I think Algio and Billy Q are extremely similar. If you watch Hernandez fight, you know that he is very round one or bust. That is what we've seen time and time again. He's an absolute killer in there in round one. But after that, he falls off a cliff. Billy Q was able to withstand the round one barrage. And after that, he was able to take over and find the finish. I think Algio is going to do the same exact thing here. He's got a great chin. He's got great cardio, great grappling, great striking. So I do think Algio is going to win the later this fight goes. Give me a round three submission. Linz taking on Kute Laba. Linz the plus 120 underdog. Kute Laba the minus 140 favorite. And in this spot, I have no problem fading Felipe Linz. He is 38 years old. He is going to show a 100% takedown defense, but that is because he's been facing strictly strikers in the UFC. Kute Laba is the complete opposite of these guys. He is going to be looking for the takedowns. He is a dangerous, aggressive wrestler, and if he's going to get it to the ground, I think he is going to find the finish. Kute Laba does have that tendency to be round one or bust, but in this specific matchup, I think it actually works for him. Linz taking a huge step up in competition. Kute Laba, this is a big step down for him. I think Kute Laba gets it done early in round two by submission. And you guys, if you're looking for more than just my predictions, premium content is available on my Patreon. You'll have complete access to my predictions, confidence levels, best bets on the entire card, the early line movement tracker, and much more. If you're interested, the link is in the description below. And now back to more fights. Drew Dober taking on Ricky Glenn. Drew Dober is the minus 470 favorite. Ricky Glenn, the plus 360 underdog. This is another one of those lines where it was in that 300 range for Dober as the favorite. And then a couple days goes on and it completely balloons on one side we have Dober just a massive favorite if there's anything that we can say about Dober maybe the chin is starting to crack we've seen him get dropped in his last few fights we've seen him get finished in his last few fights that's a little concerning for me but do I think Ricky Glenn is going to be that type of guy to break the chin of Drew Dober like some of these other killers out there I don't think so. I think this is Drew Dober all day. He is going to land the much more impactful, bigger shots on the feet. And I do think Ricky Glenn coming off a tough knockout loss to Christos Yagos. That's not going to end well for him. Drew Dober gets back on track here, finds a round one knockout. Alex Morano taking on Joaquin Buckley. Alex Morano plus 140 as the underdog. Joaquin Buckley as the minus 170 favorite. This is a fight that I have gone back and forth on so many times. And it looks like I am going to land on the underdog here. Alex Morano, you have Joaquin Buckley. 185, moving down to 170. In ways, I think it makes sense for him because... You know, he seems to be too small for 185, so he will be the bigger guy down to 170. He hits like an absolute truck, so the power does translate, but there are a couple things that I think are questionable for him. I think one, the cardio is a concern, and I think the chin is a concern for this guy. And we've also seen if the fight gets extended past that one and a half round mark, that's where he's going to start falling off a cliff. I will say Murano can be chinny. We've seen him dropped. We've seen him finished in the UFC before. That can be a concern here. But if this fight gets extended, Barano is going to take over. Buckley does like to shoot for takedowns. I can see him getting a little bit desperate, a little bit sloppy. And Murano has low-key, very good submissions. So I do think Murano can win by submission in round three. Joe Pfeiffer taking on Abdul Razak Al Hassan. You have Pfeiffer minus 455 favorite. Al Hassan the plus 350 underdog. Another one of these spots. It's the co-main event. Pfeiffer is here for a reason. We know the UFC wants to drive this hype machine to the moon. Al Hassan just happens to be a pawn in the game here. I do think Al Hassan is dangerous early on. He's a round one killer. He can take the fight to the ground. Nicknamed Judo Thunder. We know he's got that background. But Joe Pfeiffer, 
Overall, he's going to be the much bigger guy. He's going to have a significant reach and size advantage. I do think he's going to land that kill shot eventually. So I will go with Joe Pfeiffer to win playing the UFC narrative here by round two knockout. Grant Dawson taking on Bobby Green in the main event. Grant Dawson minus 425, Bobby Green plus 300. I made a video about this earlier in the week. I do think Bobby Green does have value at this plus 300 level because historically we have over 20 fights in the UFC to go off of. Green has shown strong takedown defense, a strong getup game, good grappling defense. He's been submitted two times. Both of those times were way back in 2009. Bobby Green has great cardio and he is going to be the better striker of the two. So I do think Dawson can go in there because we've seen before he is improving. Moving to American top team, he has gotten much better. The wrestling is an absolute problem. He can take your back, rack up control time. He will throw up sub attempts and we see that the cardio and the striking is improving. So I do think Dawson is the correct side if you're playing just a straight play. But betting wise, I do think there is some value on Bobby Green plus 300. I may even sprinkle some money on that round four, round five props just because Dawson in the past has shown that the cardio can fail him and Green can take over as the fight goes on. But Dawson officially is the play to win by decision. And as far as my three best bets go, the prop, the lines have not dropped yet, but the three ones that I am going to look at, Johnny Munoz by submission, we have Joe Pfeiffer by knockout, and we have Bill Algio to win inside the distance. Those are going to be the three best bets. And that'll be it for today's video, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.